thanks to all the rain this year, I have gotten my rose bush has gotten out of hand. I should have pruned it, but I didn't. And it's making tons of blooms and lots of foliage. Look at that, it's gorgeous. I feel like I'm in a rose garden. Look at that beautiful giant bloom right there. I can't reach it. It's so big. And below it is another big one. Look at all those ready to bloom. I love it so much. So I sewed my gladiolus uh, about a month and a half ago or two months ago and they're popping up. I love them. Um, I didn't know that they are bulbs, but they are a summer blooming bulb. So as it heats up, it's doing even better as opposed to anemones and ranunculus. They like to be in the cold and as soon as it heats up, they start to go dormant. So it's the opposite. So anyway, at least I'm going to have some blooms for the summer and I put them here next to the chicken coop. So I was at Costco recently, if you saw my video, um, and what I did was I bought this nectarine tree. I was reading all the labels, if you had noticed it, and I saw that this Double Delight nectarine is pretty good, the description of it. Ripens July to August. Stunning double petaled pink flowers, so I love that in spring, followed by abundant crop of medium-sized dark red fruits with rich, sweet flavor. So I love that. And it's pretty big and healthy. Now I haven't seen any blooms and it could be that when I bought it, it was in the store and then I brought it home and it's out in the sunlight and I've been watering it about two to three times a week, but so I don't know. I haven't seen the blossoms, so I don't know if it's too late in the season for it uh, to bloom this year. And I'll have to wait till next year as it ripens July and August and there are no blooms. So that's okay though. I should have bought them on the first batch of plants that I saw, but I didn't buy them at that time. So I loosened this, this thing because it was quite tight on it and this is where the um, rootstock and the grafting occurred and you want nothing there and you want to make sure it's a healthy plant. While at Costco I saw these plants and as you can see it was featured in my video. So I saw this um, fishbone cactus. See how it kind of goes like that side to side like a zigzag. And then I saw this, I think it's called Hindu rope. And I guess I should water it because it's looking kind of dry. But um, it also has little baby plants coming up. Love it. Um, and it was a pretty good price, 15 bucks for both. Hi friends, so my nasturtiums have gone crazy and just overtook this little garden bed here that I had some pineapple sage, I have this African Nunum um, basil and it's going, it's flowering. I used to just pluck it like this and I would throw these flowers which are very scented onto my tomato plants to kind of um, mask the smell of tomatoes so that I don't get the tomato hornworms coming around too much. So that's what I used to do but my tomatoes are slow growing right now and I'll probably do that. I will probably pluck this off and throw them around my tomatoes. Um, kind of like mulch the top of the tomato plants. So I've been just coming out here and just munching on the nasturtiums. And I noticed that right next to it, 
I have this um, Japanese lily and it's starting to bloom again. It's so pretty. This is the one that I saw just a moment ago and that caught my eye. Isn't that pretty? It's got three colors. So another thing that came back, I overwintered it because I just put a lot of mulch um, surrounding the plant and I cut off some of the old stems um, last year and um, there was quite a bit of stem left and I just recently cut some more down because it was quite tall about two feet tall still so I cut them down I just put a lot of mulch over here and it overwintered well so now it's coming back I didn't have to buy another plant each of these were about four something 450 or so so I get them for two years and I get both plants coming back so now it's averaging 225 or so per plant <laughs> as I'm getting it a second year. And I have a pepper here, a shishito pepper, I believe. No, this is the shishito pepper. This one here, and I did the same thing. I buried it heavily with mulch, and it's still green, so I'm thinking it's gonna come back. I'm not sure about this one. I think that was the Anaheim chili. It came back last year from the year prior, so I'm hoping it'll survive. It's kind of a mess here. Um, I planted a pineapple top there. Um, as I'm kind of burying everything and throwing a lot of mulch here, so it looks really messy, but it's just to keep the chili peppers alive. This one may not have made it. It was a snacking pepper, a sweet pepper. It was orange colored. Here's the other one. They might just be corpses now. And... This one, it's still green. It's a bell pepper. I gotta chop off some of these um, stems. But I hope it survived. It was a very wet, cold winter and these plants are hot, hot weather plants, all these peppers. So this one had survived for two years. I'm hoping it'll come back. It really didn't give me too many um, vegetables, but maybe if I feed it more this year, We'll see. But this is exciting because these, this plant and this plant look so gorgeous and lush already. And it's probably, and it's quite big for, um, so it's worth it to overwinter a plant if possible. So my first, my sunflower seed, I mean, my first sunflower of the year that bloomed was overwintered and then now I've got this massive one that I showed you in my last video the top of it right there that's the top and I love this variety because it doesn't just have one one flower per stalk it has multiple flowers so here's another one there's another one and it's just all over the place and even better each flower has some other baby flowers growing beneath it. That's really cool. And under the shade of that is my um, snap pea. So it's making lots of fruit. Whereas the other one's suffering because it's not being sheltered. I don't know what these birds are after, but this is the first time I've seen that many crows in a row. A murder of crows. I mean, that is a lot. I've never seen that many before. I don't know what they're after or what, what's been around here. So please excuse all the noise because the first earlier this year we had the noisy parrots and now we've got these crows. Reminds me of that movie, The Birds. Remember that one? Scary. So recently I bit the bullet. I didn't want to buy these clay pots. Excuse the bird noise. So I saw the clay pots were eight inches uh, wide and they were um, 40 bucks I think. They were on sale or 20 bucks. It was really cheap, maybe 25. I, I can't remember now. And when I went to the store, they didn't have it and I was really bummed about it. 
So I finally had to have my husband buy these clay pots. They're really large. I'm not sure what size they are. But we got them at full price, which I really don't like to buy at full price. 16 and a half inches. But I love that they're clay because I'm growing an edible in it. I transplanted the honeyberries in here. So there's Mrs. Honeyberry and then this is Mr. Honeyberry with nice fresh soil. And they were $12.98 each. And yeah, they were getting root bound. So I had to transplant them and they look kind of like the leaves are a little suffering because at first they were green and now they're turning yellow. So I had two zucchinis in here and I transplanted one out of here. So this one's all by its lonesome. I'm going to give that to my sister. Oh my goodness, how pretty. Look at these um, leaves. Let's see what this is. Um, tender sweet orange watermelon. Awesome. I'm going to transplant one out. I was hoping more would grow. I thought I'd put more seeds in there. Here's one. It is the black diamond watermelon and this is one Crenshaw melon huh. they don't really have a good um, successful germination rate because I thought I put more seeds in there and that's all I got over here I have Kajari melons there too and then you see that divot I pulled out one of the seedlings and I transplanted elsewhere my cucumbers are coming out. I'm going to have to separate some of them, like this one. Awesome. Let me tell let me tell you what it is. It's the burpee cucumber. Um, so that has a really good um, um, germination rate. Um, some of these, I'll give it some time because I just sowed these a week and a half ago, I believe. Look at that. It has a new one coming up. This has a really good germination rate. This is Tigger Melon. So I have one, two, three, four seedlings. Awesome. Gonna have to separate those out a little, a little bit, starting with this big guy. The okra may need some nutrients or something because they're starting to turn a little bit yellow in the leaves, but they're growing so fast. It says it takes 57 days to harvest, and I love it. It popped up practically two days after I sowed the seeds. Love it. So I got from Home Depot four plants for $10, which was a, a steal, especially since plants are now like 4 or $5 each. And my beefsteak is already making two tomatoes. Love it. And then look at all these flowers and it made a pepper over here. And then those are starting to flower. So I can't wait to start harvesting stuff out of these. Hi friends, look at the number of blooms I have all over my rose bush. Um, it usually does bloom in early spring and I, it gets so many flowers just, just all over the place, just tons of it. I love it so much, especially with the rains this year. We had so much rain. I think that's what um, is making everything bloom like this. Moving on to my other rose bush. Look at how much flowering it's doing. It's just everywhere. It's gorgeous. Everywhere. I love the color of this. The camera doesn't do it justice. And then I have this huge pile of uh, lavender. It smells so good. Mmm, that smells so delicious. I also planted this pineapple mint here, and it does smell like pineapple. And it's variegated, and you can make teas out of it, and I love it. So I can use it in floral arrangements as well, and it's all for my yard. I have these flowers as well, but they're so dainty. I think that when I cut them and I put, bring them inside, they'll just kind of like shrivel up. So I haven't tried using these in floral arrangements, but they are really tall and they're really pretty. 
and very um, smooth and shiny. I have this baby red rose. They're like baby, baby roses. And then this bigger variety of a darker shade of rose, of red. And then this pink variety. And some of these, I forgot what they're called right now, but they're gorgeous. So I can just walk around and use any of these in my floral arrangement. So let me show you. So I made this floral arrangement using a little sprig of lavender, some pineapple, mint, some roses. Hi friends, I wanted to show you the peak of the day when the poppies are in bloom and opened and really big and bright and orange. So I didn't know but they close up at night and they take their time to open up in the morning. So the best time to catch them is in the middle of the day. So gorgeous. I love the deep uh, orange color so those are kind of flopped over because they were flopped over the other way and I'm trying to train them to go the other way and try to grow more flowers in between so I popped in some more zinnia seeds because the zinnia seeds I put in there earlier in the year did not come up and then I transplanted a Cosmo right there but there is bachelor's button fallen over and there's a a blue flower right there bluish purple and I'm gonna have to train it again to sit upright so guys I'm running out of room to plant things um, I grew a lot of starts for my family and for myself and um, I like to position things in a certain way so this uh, um, loquat tree the branch was leaning over towards me this in this direction and what used to be Borge way and I propped it up with this uh, trellis and what I'm doing is I'm I set it that way so that the screen that's screening the chicken run is gonna keep them shaded and though sometimes the wind blows it and it falls off and sometimes it blows the blows this and I don't want this eventually to uh, break my corn so I'm gonna set another trellis here and I'm just gonna grow things up so I'm using um, different things for multi-purpose uh, in multi-purpose ways so um, not only is this trellis keeping this shade cloth from falling over or from breaking my corn that I'm growing over here in corn way now, um, corn row. Um, I am growing a Crenshaw melon up this and on the other side I'm going to grow another, another melon of some sort or something I haven't decided yet. But I'm going to try to grow as many things in as small, in the small spaces as possible. So there's corn row. And here's a lovely sunflower coming up from the black oil sunflower seeds from the chicken feed. So they grew something so they aren't adulterated, they weren't toasted or anything. I transplanted this cucumber here. It's a burpee garden sweet cucumber. I'm transplanting this one here and this one here and uh, what are they? Tigger melons. So that way they can pollinate, like help be pollinated with each other by bees and whatnot. I planted another garden sweet burpee cucumber here, but it's suffering because earlier it was in total shade and now it's in total sun. So along with my Kajari melon that I transplanted over here, I transplanted another Kajari melon. 
and it's going to be going up this trellis here. And underneath my pear tree and my apricot tree, which is providing a lot of shade, more shade than I thought, which kind of helps, um, I've got some mums. I've got this um, perennial that I ordered. I'm not sure what it is at the moment. Um, I have this perennial that I purchased. I think they're called Penstemon, I think. Um, some more mums. Uh, there is my neon colored plant. I forgot what it's called. Looks like my coreopsis died. Ugh. So, I'm looking for, I know this, this here is my coneflower, my purple coneflower. So yes, here are some more puppies. And like I said, I'm going to train them se to separate because in between them is another flower. And then here is another bachelor button. And it looks purple here, but it's really like a blue, bluish purple. It's really gorgeous. I can't wait because it's going to have a lot more flowers. As you can see, all these little buds. I love it. And finally, all my green beans are growing. I am so happy. I was so worried that they weren't going to grow. They'll offer some shade in my enclosed area, um, as well as some sun and some shade, but just a little protection. Um, there's a bell pepper growing, a tomato, a beefsteak tomato. 